So you want to be a solo traveler. I haven't seen my bed in 13 days. 13 days. You want to travel the world by yourself? Yep, it'll be fun, they said. It'll be fun and you'll meet lots of people and do some cool stuff. Did they also tell you that it's hard to sleep when you travel solo? Did they also tell you that sometimes it gets really freaking lonely? Like, not like, ooh, I'm by myself lonely, but like, literally, just lonely. You might have to forgive me a little bit. I'm a little delusional. I haven't slept in about 20 hours, and I hadn't had a shower in 23. Let's do that. Purple rain, purple rain. I got some good sleep last night. Woo! I got some good sleep. Um, <laughs> I got some good sleep and I woke up to a uh, to another wonderful YouTube live stream. Uh, let me just share this with you guys. If <laughs> solo traveling is one thing, all right. A lot of people that solo travel these days or to travel in general um, have decided to start a YouTube channel. Nothing wrong with that. You need to have very, very, very thick skin if you are going to travel and put your personal life on the internet. And I'm going to tell you why. Because every single day that goes by, I get accused of God forbidden things. Uh, things that I've never done, things that I will never do. Um, and it goes out to the public. It's generated by a bunch of old men who have nothing better to do with their life because the fact is they have to talk about other people. If they talked about themselves, no one would listen because they're not that interesting. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just got done hearing a live stream with me being, I think they, I got called a schizophrenic or psychopath or something and I get um, every single day, I either get a death threat or I'm going to jail threat, or we track dry P, we know where you are, we're coming to get you threat, blah, blah, blah. Let me show you something. You see that right there? Do you guys know what that is? That is the world's smallest violin playing for you YouTubers that threaten me all the time. <laughs> oh, you guys make me laugh. So, there is things that you can do to protect yourself though, and it is kind of important. Um, there are websites out there and there are apps out there that can actually help you gather information on these people. Now, you need to know that searching someone's IP address is not illegal, okay? The intent behind searching someone's IP address, tracking their IP address, and the way you use the information when you obtain it can be illegal. If you use their information for nefarious purposes, such as doxing, doxing is a term used on social media now, which basically means you share someone's information, personal information, their address, their name, how many kids they have, where the kids go to school, um, anything about them that could provide someone else to do them harm or for you to do them harm. If you provide that information and follow it up with any kind of threat whatsoever, it is highly illegal. Okay, so what you can do is you can do your own research, um, Google these things, you'll find the websites and the applications to use the software. Even if it's someone who just has um, a generic YouTube name, like it's not even a real channel with videos, but they've put in a name, you can find their information, okay? And what you have to do, what you have to be very, very, very careful not to do is do not use that information in a nefarious way in any way, form, or fashion. You cannot use that information once you gather it and put it out on the internet for everyone to see and hear or to put the people, even though they've threatened you, you cannot put that information out to cause them any kind of harm. What you can do with that information is what I do. You can take that information and tuck it away in a nice little folder, very organized in your computer, make double backups on hard drives. And then once a week or once a month, however often you're getting threats, go to your local U.S. Embassy if you're traveling and you're an American, or your local embassy, wherever it may be, and file an affidavit against these people with their real names and their real information. 
okay? Because you can use their information for that. It's not hard. And you're not going to get in trouble. Where people get in trouble is when they dox people. When they put their information out there saying, I'm going to come to your door, I'm going to do this to you, or they put the information out there um, and someone else uses that information to do them harm. People don't realize that makes you an accomplice. You have to check these laws. They're all out there. I was going to take the time and really go through all this with you guys, but it, it, there's just so much information on it. I, I just don't feel like doing it. Frankly, I don't have time. Um, but it's real, and you can check it out. You can believe me or not. Keep trying. You'll see. I promise. I don't worry about people coming to do me harm, but if they do, I can assure you. Their name is on a piece of paper somewhere, uh, either with a law firm or the U.S. Embassy in my country of choice. Um, you need to know that putting a, a lawyer on retainer, if you are having these kind of problems, is not that expensive in Southeast Asia, okay? Uh, so if you're traveling Southeast Asia in particular and you're having any kind of problems like I'm having, but well, it's not really a problem for me anymore. I don't care. It's just the fact that if something should ever happen to me, there is a detailed record of everyone who has ever made any kind of threat or uh, any kind of indirect threat, anything, all the information's out there, who they are, where they live, where they're from, blah, blah, blah. So you put all that stuff out there, and then when something happens, granted, it's unfortunate that something's going to happen to you, but at least you have solace in the fact knowing that these people will be held accountable, right? Especially if you have hours and hours of audio of them defaming you uh, on social media, and which is basically libel. Uh, you can call it slander as well if you want to, but I think the correct term is libel when you use social media platform. Um, so if they're guilty of all that, you got a good case. And eventually, you know, some of the people that deal with me that come after me the way they do, are, I have a feeling that it's gonna wind up in a court system somewhere. And when that happens, I'm prepared. I am thoroughly prepared. So um, that's what I encourage you guys to do. Also, if you think it is an immediate threat, go to whatever local police station you can get to and tell them what your issue is because it is important. Your safety is important and it is your responsibility uh, to make sure that you are protected. Now, with that being said, Let's continue on to Bangkok. Traveling solo has many perks, but one of the downfalls of it is when it comes to issues, like I just mentioned, you have to do it all by yourself and it takes a lot of time. Um, the best advice I can give you is develop a system, right? Set your recorders on a schedule. Um, that way you don't have to be home for the live streams and all that crap. And, you know, you can just your computer records it automatically and you don't have to worry about it. Um, we are going to get a real massage here in Thailand because that's how upset I am. <laughs> also, when you are solo traveling, please remember this. Everything that you have to do that is on a schedule is up to you. It is your responsibility to make sure you get everywhere you have to go and be everywhere you have to be. So you have to pay close attention to everything. For example, if you're in a new city and you get ready to take the subway, light rail, train, bus, or whatever, make sure you're going in the right direction. That's step number one. And I know that sounds silly, but it happens way more often than you would think. Uh, even to me, I'm still guilty of doing it myself. So uh, that wastes a lot of time. It also wastes money. Um, and it's very important just simply not to do uh, things like that. You don't want to make many mistakes. It's okay. We're going to make mistakes as travelers. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we get better. But uh, minimizing those mistakes will be extremely advantageous to you in the long run. I promise. So try to pay attention <laughs> to what you're doing when you're going places. Very important. Another thing to consider as a solo traveler is food. You're going to have to eat. It's true. You're going to have to eat. Um, one thing I always like to keep in mind is where am I going to eat before I start uh, going out for the night, for the day, or whatever. Try to kind of sort of plan a little bit of a budget and like what I'm going to be spending, what I may not be spending, because the truth of the matter is um, you can wind up spending a lot of money on food if you eat out every day, all day, all the time, without question. Like you're going to spend a lot of money. 
So what do you want to eat? Do you want to stay healthy? Do you want to just eat a little bit? Do you want to eat a lot? Questions that need to be answered regarding food need to be answered probably before you go out for the day. Uh, have a plan. That is my best advice to you when it comes to food because food can get very, very, very expensive very quickly. Um, if you leave room in your budget for food, you would be surprised um, how much of that budget it takes up if you don't plan accordingly. In other words, if you say, uh, I'm going to spend this on transportation, this on the destination I'm going to, um, this on today's activities, and the rest of it will be food, by the time you get to the end of the day, there may not be any more rest of it because um, you may eat a bigger breakfast that costs more money than you have. Um, it's just best to plan these things out and that, that's going to lead into planning out your whole day. So when you're by yourself, make sure you make a daily budget. Not just a weekly or monthly, but a daily budget is super duper important. After, nah, let's say I got a decent night's sleep two nights in a row. And uh, now it's back on the road again, as you can see around me. I'm at the bus station here in Bangkok and uh, I'm headed to my next destination. So uh, try to pack light. That is my next tip for solo traveling. The lighter you can pack, the better. Uh, if you are a videographer or photographer and you plan to be a solo traveler, I highly encourage you to uh, take a look at the generation of mirrorless cameras that are coming out now. Hopefully, uh, by this time next month, um, I will have a new mirrorless camera um, and I am very, very, very excited about that. Um, everything goes according to plan, should happen. And I will do an unboxing and uh, tell you guys about the camera. We'll talk about the whole nine yards of what I got it for, why, um, why I thought it was the best choice for any of you that are interested. And we'll go from there. Solo traveling is a great experience just to really test your fundamental character. <laughs> and by that, I mean it will test uh, what kind of person you truly are. Particularly when you travel these uh, countries that, you know, the thing about being in a Southeast Asian country is it's okay, they're okay with you being here, but when it all comes down to it at the end of the day, they really don't want you here. I mean, they, they really don't at the end of the day. Um, and I'm speaking in general terms, okay? I'm not speaking about every single person in every single country. But, um, you know, any kind of, I hate this word, privilege that you think you have in America, if you're an American, especially, God forbid, white privilege, right? Uh, that shit goes out the window um, when you come to Southeast Asia. Nobody cares that you're an American. In fact, uh, being an American or a Westerner, period, um, gives you <laughs> no kind of entitlements at all. Um, people will look for reasons uh, to con you, scam you, take money from you, steal from you, lie about you, create false narratives about you. Um, the people here will team up on you, and as been uh, mentioned in a previous video, if you do get into a physical altercation, it's gonna be 100 on one, or 20 on one. It's not ever gonna be a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that also uh, holds true when it comes to legal situations, because as happened to me previously, you can have um, someone, uh, a citizen of a country, and uh, they, you know, they coerce them into uh, alleging criminal allegations against you with absolutely no basis. Um, these are the things that you're going to run into when you travel if you stay in places for a long period of time. It's going to happen. So, uh, and it'll happen because the facade of the people that you meet when you travel sometimes, you have to remember, it's just a facade. You're meeting their representative for the first time. Anytime we meet somebody in life, we are always meeting their representative. That includes myself. I'm talking about me too. Uh, eventually, the representative, the mask falls off and you get to see the true person. Sometimes uh, that process takes a day. Sometimes that process takes a year or more. 
Um, so you have to be very, very, very vigilant. Be very vigilant uh, when meeting people, when giving your information to anyone. I'm not just talking about expats or people you travel with, anyone. Don't put it online. Uh, transparency is okay, but there, there has to be a line to that transparency. Uh, because people will take anything they can and use it against you uh, and do anything they want to with it. And it's really sad, but this is what you're going to face if you travel by yourself. Now, if you're a person that travels to, you know, Southeast Asian country, whatever, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, wherever, and you meet up with a, with a girl or guy, uh, depending on your travel situation, and they're a citizen of that country, then you have some leverage. Um, particularly if you get married to them, then you really have some leverage. And you can avoid most of these problems uh, in terms of uh, people just fabricating stories against you and filing a completely fabricated legal uh, accusations and etc. etc. So these are the things that have happened to me uh, in my experience and I am sharing them with you in the hopes that you don't have to go through it. And one thing I've learned is if you back away from the drama and do not engage in it, and this applies not only to people on, on YouTube, but just in life in general. Uh, if you back away from that and just let it go, let it run its course, let people think whatever they want to think, continue doing you, stay true to yourself, don't get caught up in it and become somebody you're not. Uh, as human beings, we become products of our environment. So if you listen to all that crap, eventually you're going to join in on all that crap. Doesn't matter if it's a bar scene, if it's a YouTube channel. Um, if you're in a red light district and you stay too long, you're probably going to wind up doing something you regret the next day. Um, that's just how life works. So stay away from it. Be true to yourself. Um, stay true to who you are and eventually People will see who you are, and you won't need to uh, prove anything to anyone. You won't need to prove anything to anyone because they'll see it. Um, I'll try to put a link right here, but I did a video called Seven Years of Freedom uh, in which I talk about being clean uh, from drugs and alcohol, being clean and sober for a little over seven years now. And when I got clean, uh, nobody, would talk to me. I, not my family, not my, I didn't have any friends. Uh, nobody trusted me, nobody would talk to me, etc. And after about six months of being clean and later nine months and a year, all that family and all those friends were coming back and I was making new ones. And the reason is because my behavior had changed, my actions had changed. I was no longer uh, in the environment that I had placed myself in. Don't talk about it, be about it is the best advice I can give to anybody who wants to travel solo. Uh, don't, don't tell people who you are, what you're gonna be, just let them see it through your content, right? Let them see it, if you're not a YouTuber, let them see it in your day-to-day -day actions. You'll meet people in hostels, uh, you'll meet people at hotels or events as you travel, if you're not a YouTuber or if you are a YouTuber. Um, and they will see your character through uh, what anybody has ever told them about you. So, enough with the haters. As I mentioned before, the haters only talk about you because they can't talk about themselves. People just wouldn't find it interesting. Uh, people that tend to bring other people down to lift themselves up have enormous self-esteem issues. And that is why it is very, very important not to associate yourself with those people. It's very easy to do as a solo traveler. You get caught up in a little click here, a little click there. Even if you're just moving from country to country, month to month, um, you can still find yourself in the wrong faction. And that's really kind of how I want to sum all this stuff up. Basically what I want to tell you is, do you always stay true to yourself? If you have a moral compass, make sure it stays on course. Uh, take the necessary steps you need always to protect yourself. There is no shame in uh, taking any kind of action you need to make sure that you're safe. There's no shame. Uh, there's also no shame in coming on a uh, public forum or if you're not a YouTuber and 
you're at an event, there's no shame in telling people who you are. Just be careful about the personal information that you give them. Uh, like me, for example, I share my history with people because I don't care. Uh, I share my history with people because I hope it helps someone. There are many, many people that are in the same struggle that I was uh, seven years ago. And I hope that they see me now and see what my life has become and can say, damn, if he can do it, so can I. That's the whole point behind me sharing this stuff. It's not that I want you guys to, oh, you overcome this, you overcome that. Listen, uh, addiction is one thing, but I've overcome a lot more than addiction in my life. Many things that I don't talk about and probably never will because it's really none of anybody's business. Um, and those are those things that you have to decide what you want to allow to be transparent and what you don't, right? So as a solo traveler, my final words, make sure your money's right, make sure you set a budget daily, weekly, and monthly. Make sure you use your head when you're traveling. Make sure you sleep when you're traveling because if you're rested, you can think. <laughs> and thinking is very important when you're by yourself, as I discussed earlier. Uh, you don't want to go the wrong direction on a train and miss a flight. Uh, there's just so many, so many things that can happen uh, when you're by yourself. Uh, make sure you're protected uh, physically. If you can carry mace or a knife in a country, uh, you can't in this country, so I don't. But if you can, uh, make sure that you carry whatever kind of protection you need. Uh, always uh, make sure you have a first aid kit with you at all times if you're going to be outside of a city. Um, it's just a good idea. Basic common sense practices will save you a ton of headache as a solo traveler. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video because I had a great time making it and I will see you on the next one.